you know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, the last two years, you know, not having a Puerto Rican weekend and actually having a fight on that weekend. So, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward, man, to, to performing, you know, it's Jordan, like I always do, I'll be back to all of them. Uh, it's Jesslyn here. Jesslyn is with us. Uh, Edgar, I want to talk about Jesslyn Silva, 16 years old. You've become uh, almost a mentor, friend to her. Uh, she was on path, those of you watching, to compete in the 2024 Olympics, but unfortunately a, ki a cancer diagnosis derailed those plans, and fighting is no longer in the cards for Jesslyn. But I know that, Edgar, you've, uh, you've been a part of this journey with her recently, and the WBO would like to present her with an honorary championship belt, and I know she is here, so Jessalyn, come on up here, Edgar, please do us the honors, and come on up, Jessalyn, it is so great to have you with us. Go right up front, guys, go right down front. Edgar, I wanted to uh, surprise her a little bit more. I, I believe you wanted to tell her that maybe she would be accompanying you to the ring with your walkout. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I want you to walk out with me uh, this Saturday, okay? I want you to be in the front holding the belt, walking me out, cheering me on, being right in front of high chain. And uh, I just want to let everybody know, you know, all the fighters that's fighting on this card, you know, that's with top rank, that's not with top rank. Um, you know, besides, you know, fighting for the Puerto Ricans and for your family, you know, we, we should definitely be fighting for this young girl right here, you know, she's, she's the real fighter, you know, not us, you know, she's fighting for her life right now, so, uh, you know, I just want to say that, uh, you know, all the fighters, Saturday night, they'll be fighting for her and all the victory goes to her, okay? Amazing. Amazing. Jesse, thank you so much for being here with us today, thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, it goes down Saturday, June 11th, right here at Madison Square Garden. Our undercards begin at 7.10 Eastern on ESPN+, Plus, and then we switch over to the network at 11 p.m. Eastern for the co-feature and, co and our main event of the evening. I'm going to ask the LeBron gentlemen to head down front for your first face-off of the week, and we will see you tomorrow for weigh-ins. As always, this is Top Rank. This is Boxing. That chain is iced out as fuck.
questions in, but I'm going to try to ask something if I can. I need a Damn, the chain is super iced out. I need me something like that in the future. Ugh. ¿Qué piensas de Angulo? No, Angulo es un peleador fuerte, tú sabes. Y, y no, estamos, estamos ready, estamos, estamos listos para, para esta pelea. Estamos, tú sabes, preparados 100% como siempre. Esa. Dicen que van a ser dos choques de trenes, ¿verdad? Sí, claro. claro. El, 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 el que soporte es el que va a ganar. Exacto, pero no, pero yo voy a ganar, tú sabes. Uh -huh. Yo soy, yo voy a boxear finito, tú sabes, inteligente, y tú sabes, como siempre, tengo fuerza, so, eso, es, eso va a cambiar. Ahora quiere que sea toda la gente de Colombia, que sea Colombia. No, para Colombia, you know, to tune in, you know, este sábado, mi once, you know, me quiero mucho Colombia porque, tú sabes, me gusta Colombia la, y la comida también, oíste. So, <laughs> Muchas gracias, ¿eh? Gracias. Angulo is a pretty durable guy. Yeah. What are a few things you have to worry about with him in the ring? Um, to be honest, like, you know, it was just, just about me being in shape. You know, I, just, I just made sure I came in the best shape of my life. You know, this is my body. You know, everything is different. Um, like I said, you know, skills pay the bills, man. Like, I don't feel like he has no type of skill. I think he's a one a one way fighter, you know, he fights the same every fight. Um, you know, he comes forward, he's a tough guy, he punches hard, you know, but I punch hard too not the box, so that's gonna make a difference in the fight. Did you want to check out his fight against Benavides? Yeah, I watched all the, I watched like a lot of his fights. And um, you know, he just got punched on like a puncher back for like, ten rounds, you know, so So you didn't really rate a performance too high in that fight. Right? Yeah, and, and even like when he fought Sims, you know, if Sims would have threw more punches, if Sims would have box Sims box good, the boxing was was messing him up, but he didn't throw enough punches. If he, as soon as he, he was letting his hands go, he was putting, he was stopping and doing on his strikes. You know, so for a guy like me, I could box and could punch, you know, it's going to be a major factor in the fight. I mean, not to really press on the whole knockout thing or whatever, but in your opinion, does it make more sense to just keep on getting these rounds in, like you were saying, that, you know, you got 16 first round knockouts, you didn't really get a chance to really kind of build yourself, I guess, to quote unquote right way. Do you just want to keep on getting these, you know, these rounds in and then eventually putting guys in? Yeah, you know, um, but, you know, it comes to boxing, man. Like, you know, this guy's durable. Um, you know, he comes forward. So, for me, it's like, I think it's a great fight, man. That's why we chose him. You know, Puerto Rican Day weekend, you know, it wasn't like, it's not a guy that's going to run. You know, he's not going to run around in the circles. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to get scared to get punched. He's going to want to come and fight. So, that was the best thing for us, just to get a guy that's strong and durable. You know, possibly make me go rounds, but also look good and get a great win. How did you kind of rate your performance against Steve Bro? Um... You know, I wasn't happy, you know, with the performance, you know, then, you know, I, obviously I came back from a, from a, from a tour bicep in the four or five months, you know, and that's a, a year and a half, a year to a year and a half recovery, you know, and a lot of fighters don't take a fight within five months, you know, and then um, I had problems two weeks before the fight, you know, with my, my elbow hurt, and, you know, people don't understand that when you're, when you're, when you're focusing on, a, on an arm, right, that goes completely dead. And to try to bring it back, you know, you focus on certain things. We focus on the biceps, you know, but we didn't really focus too much on the, on the tricep, you know. So a lot of things that was that, that happened to me before the fight, you know, I didn't want to pull out the fight, so we kept it going. But um, you know, like I said, man, no excuses. Like I said, we had a fight after the fight. Um, you know, I'm just happy we got the unanimous decision. Yeah, of course. Um, what was it like to train in uh, Puerto Rico? And also, was this your first time training outside of the United States? Uh, yeah, no. Well, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Puerto Rico was the first. Um, I mean, it was amazing, man. You know, I wound up staying there because of Tito Trinidad. You know, I went, I went for a phone with him two weeks before I started camp. And he was like, um, you know, I think you should stay out here and train. Like, this is your soil, this is your island. You know, the way I did it, you should do it. And, um, you know, it, it'll create more of a buzz for you. So I just listened to him and I stood there for eight weeks. Um, you said that filling the, the shoes of legends that have fought at MSG, uh, other headliners, uh, you said it's not an easy task, but how have you been holding up? Has that motivated you? Has that put more pressure? How have you yeah. been holding up with nah, that? It's, motiv it's, not, it's no pressure, man. Like, and if it is pressure, you know, you know, a diamond, you know, got to go through the rough, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, it's actually a blessing. Like, I look at it like, you know, God blessing me, man. You know, you know I know the shoes is not, it's not easy to fulfill, you know, Tito and Porto made a major impact in Puerto Rico, you know, so my goal is to do the same, you know, just to bring back that fire that Puerto Rico had before. And uh, when you had guys like that in your camp, uh, Tito Trinidad and Miguel Cotto, like, what are some of the things that you feel like, how, do, how does that help you to improve your game? Um, you know, they, they know I could box, they know I could punch, you know, they were just telling me, you know, to just listen to my corner, listen to my dad, you know, and, um, you know, just, just don't worry about the knockouts, you know, the knockouts is going to come within, within, within me boxing, you know, so, like, I just follow that, you know, with Trinidad and Seth Yeah, Cole. Let him get a question, yeah. got a So, I noticed uh, that you seem to say that you was working on your boxing these previous, uh, yeah. in your camp with Tito Trinidad. Did you work on the jab? Because I felt like uh, versus Cosetis and versus uh, your let previous I forgot his name. If you would have used, your, yeah, Steve Rose, if you would have used your jab much more often, I feel like you would have been able to get in there and get the knockout. That's something yeah. that you focused on in this camp? Um, but you got to remember, when I fought for seven, right, I threw my bicep up in the third round. Definitely. So I was jabbing in the first two rounds. If you look at the first two rounds, I, jabbed. I actually broke his audible bone in three places in October. It was insane. Which they was going to stop the fight with my left hand. And then, um, you know, like I said, man, coming from an injury like that, bro, it's not easy, man. Like, people, a lot of fighters, bro, take a year off uh, without fighting, without using that arm. And um, I came back within five months. And then, um, you know, I had problems with the Steve Rose fight with my elbow. You know, my elbow was hurting me tremendously after the second round, you know. So that's another reason why I wasn't really affected with my job, man. But, um, you know, thank God, you know, we, we, we got through the, you know, through, the, through my trials and tribulations, man. And, um, you know, we went through, we got the victory. And that's all that matters. And now I'm focused on this fight, June 11. Well, I got a question, then. I will do that. Well, I definitely got a question in at least. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with the president. Where is everybody else? Do we see anybody else out here to interview? Yeah. They've got a shit. I was definitely able to ask a question out here in the press conference, but shit is a little, uh, definitely a little bit of thirst out here. It was definitely more difficult to ask some questions than I thought. I'm not really a thirsty ass dude to try to get in here and fight dudes. I, I got one question in though. He did say, uh, you know, about his injuries and that his jab and everything is going to look much better this time around. I think so. I, I hope so. Wanted to ask him like two more questions, but now that he had to get to his actual real interview, you know, these YouTube interviews aren't, they're nothing for him. It's like. I'm not top rank, so it makes sense that he'd go right over there and do what he got to do. But I also got here like 10 minutes late, so I didn't even catch the beginning of the press conference. Look, I, I didn't even get to brush my hair. I just walked out of my crib looking crazy so I could make it to this press conference. Yeah, he said his bicep injury, and then he had an elbow injury against uh, Steve Rose. And... Uh, yeah, he, 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 was, he was mentioning his injuries and how he was having trouble with them, and that's why he didn't really throw the jab like that. But uh, I think he'll be fine. Let's see what happens versus Angulo. He sounds very, very smart. He sounds like he had a good training camp out of Florida. He's, he's like, style for sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Can you guys hear me? Yo. Salute to Philly, Drew Evo, Alex G. You already know. 
Yeah, yeah his chain is nice to fuck out. He got big bread. You already know I'm out here trying to do what I can, trying to do what I could do to get whatever media I can get. But uh, I made it a little late to the press conference. I'll be more on time to the weigh-in. Uh, just is what it is. Awesome, awesome. I was trying to, after Berlanga, I was trying to see if I could get something new with Angulo, but uh, I don't see him anywhere. I wanted to ask him some questions regarding what style it is that he plans to come into this week, because we have no idea. <laughs> How's the video feed, Alex G? Is the video feed coming in clear? I hope so. But uh, yeah, no, I wasn't able to get Alexis Angulo because I had no idea where he went. He disappeared fairly quickly. I don't see him anywhere. I don't see none of his management team. And there was a last press conference came, so there was a hell of a lot more people to interview. I don't really see any. Of, oh, oh, I do see. Uh, I do see somebody I can interview. He's getting an interviewed right now. Let me see what I can do in a little bit. There were no hiccups. You good, my man? Good shit. Yeah. I brought the Wi-Fi this time because the first time that I came to Madison Square Garden, uh, the stream was super doo doo quality. <laughs> it, it, it's dope to see the other YouTube media personalities out here uh, recording their videos and shit like that. It's like, the dudes putting in work, you already know. <laughs> I only interview who I'm really interested in though, and not really interested in this guy right now. Ooh, I see Berlanga's pops. Let me see if I can get in there. These guys are all iced the fuck out. <laughs> These guys are all iced out, bro. It's just crazy. Let me see what I can do with him. Angulo was able to take a lot of punishment versus Suldo. He took a lot of punishment versus Suldo. He took a lot of punishment against Benavides. It should definitely be interesting. Berlanga says he's much more healed and his body feels a lot better. So we're going to see. Uh, I think he should be fine. If, if his injuries were the things that were stopping him, then he should look fine this fight. He should look great. I, I, I love that he's stepping up in opposition, though. It's not like he's stepping down. Uh, Steve Rose was a stepper from Corsetis, and Angulo's a stepper from Steve Rose. The guy got more power, he's fought two greats, his only losses are to two greats, or two good dudes, that being Zuldo, and uh, that being Benavides. Uh, look, if Zuldo was able to beat Angulo, then Edgar Berlanga should be able to beat Angulo. I don't, I don't, I don't like Zuldo, I'm gonna talk my smack. Damn, let me see if I can get somebody else in on this game. Oh, looking at the top rank, girl. Ladies are bad. Ladies are bad. Bad as fuck. I'm, try, I'm trying to I'm trying to wait for for Berlanga's dad. He's having a conversation right now, and I want to ask a question. One second. I'm busy, busy. How you guys doing today? <laughs> they both hype jobs. Zul don't fight nobody. Tell me who Zul the fought, Karma. Zul don't fight nobody. The same, the same type of dudes that Berlang is facing and Zulu has fought, so let's stop it. Let's stop the nonsense. Yo, yo, what's good, Sly? How you doing, my guy? <laughs> it's that arc right here, it is. It is arc. Listen, damn, yo, I be wanting to talk, but I don't want to interrupt those conversations. I don't want to get in there and be, be, the, be the dickhead that's like, uh, excuse me, I'm more important. That's not my style. I respect dudes. Ring, now, nah, the ring girl's looking bad out here. Zuldo doesn't have one notable win. Exactly, exactly. Karma's brutal. I enjoy her. Pro, I enjoy, I enjoy Karma's honesty all the time. Yeah, the top rank girl is going now. I was about to give him some camera love, but no, no, no. I don't care about this guy. They, st they still got Edgar Berlanga hostage over there. Sucks, I was only able to get one question though. 
And, and every time I try to find somebody else, they're right here. Both these guys are busy. Nah, none of them have stuff. None of them have anything. The difference is that uh, Zuldo has been boxing for his uh, for a lifetime, and Zuldo has like what 38 or 40 damn wins against truck drivers. It's not the same with Berlanga. He's got a shitload of first round knockouts, and I think he's gonna. He, if, I think he's gonna look better than Zuldo did against. Uh, uh, my man Angulo. Then and and you'll see, you'll see. We we'll wait. Look, it's, it's the Saturday. We don't, you know what I'm saying. Neither of them have anything. Just that one guy is a young prospect coming up, and the other guy is a veteran that's been in the boxing game for ages now and still hasn't done anything. I'm just saying. Yeah, Zuldo. Exactly, Alex. Zuldo has 100 fights with nobody on there. Nobody on there whatsoever. Shit, I'm telling you this much. I wish I was somebody's father too, because this man got the big ass, fat ass, big money change, living life good. Just came from training camp in Puerto Rico. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. First round knockout again against nobody. I'm not big enough. I'm not crediting or big enough the knockouts. But the reason I brought the knockouts up is specifically because. He hasn't gotten all those rounds in that Zuldo has. His fights have been have ended quickly. Zuldo's doodle, if you ask me. His fights have ended quickly, and it is what it is. It, it just is what it is. Could I ask you a couple questions about the big one? Okay. I mean, get you in. Oh, I can get you in this way. Come on, go fast. Come on, that's the for me. Okay. English, when you're All right, I'm on that. So, the training camp in Puerto Rico is in Puerto Rico. This is the one who is with Tito Trinidad. The training camp and the wound that he has in the arm. Is it much better now in this moment? Yes, the wound is still recovering. The wound was still a year, but that's why we went to the Pegas in the beginning. And the Pegas didn't do it. Qué bien, qué bien. So, este, en esta pelea están buscando para un naca. ¿Usted creen que va a ser de fútbol cerrando o nada más están yendo para allá dentro a pelear a saber cómo sale? No, para allá nunca ha sido fanático del primer round naca. Yo siempre he dicho a él. Pero sé que si no viene, viene. Pero no está bien eso. Exacto, ok, ok. No, muy bien, muy bien, porque... Eh... Él, él tiene mucho poder, mucha fuerza. Eh, también lo ha visto en su primera pelea de, de su carrera, que tiraba el jab bien fuerte, pero en las últimas dos peleas yo vi que el jab eh, eh, no, estaba, no lo estaba tirando tanto. Y cuando lo pregunté ahora, me dijo que era por la, por la herida. So ahora yo pienso que va a poder boxear desde Porque afuera. Y de la se, se rompió el, 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 el trice. ¿sí? En la antepenúltima pelea. Wow, wow. Sí, él eh, eh, mencionó eh, eh, cuando le había jodido el ojo a Coceres, que ah, se llamó el, el, el Isaac en tres pedazos. Oh, está, estaba bien, bien jodido, este, pero eh, sobrevivió, hizo muy bien porque eh, lo, lo noquearon por en esa pelea y se paró y siguió peleando muy bien. Eh, mucho en, la, en la vida no es... Tú te caes como tú te levantas. Exacto, de una vez, de una vez. Te quedas en el piso, te levantas, Para arriba. Pues, ya, déjame dejar de joderlo. Muchas gracias por todo. Cuídense. Y, y, y good luck on, uh, this weekend, this I'll see you guys winning, trust me. You guys have a good one. Thank you, man. There we go. There we go. Got a couple of questions in with uh, Berlanga Senior. That was pretty cool. Pretty humble, pretty chill in Spanish. My Spanish isn't amazing, but you know, we got them questions in. We did what we got to do. Let's see. But yeah, as I was saying, those first round knockouts are against nobody. No, no, nobody. Did he say six months? Uh, did he say six months about what exactly? Uh, Alex, did he say six months about what exactly? He did say that the injuries that Berlanga had in both of those previous fights were fully gone. The bicep and the tricep injury, which was like he wasn't throwing the jab like that against Rose and Corsetas, and it's going to change. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. That they spend, uh, he, I think he said five months, five to six months training Puerto Rico, and that that's made a uh, large difference instead of training, uh, I, he said, uh, training in New York, I believe it was. He said that the bicep and the tricep is good to go. So, And he said they're not looking for the knockout. They're going in here trying to fight the 12 rounds to see what happens. Uh, not trying to fight the 12 rounds, but just trying to fight the fight and see what happens, give him the best fight possible. Berlanga also seems to have his head in the game. He seems to not be thinking knockout, not be thinking early stoppage. He's in here for the fight. I appreciate that. And, bro, I don't know if you guys saw, but... Pops is iced out as well, just like Berlanga. It's, I mean, I, I get it though. I was shit. If I was doing big, look, I'm iced out. And I, not like them though. Not like them though. It's a different story. I think uh, it's about time to get out of here though, because I don't really see any other opportunities for any other interviews happening out here. So I think it's getting about close to going home and getting up out of here. I don't really care about uh, Ak, so I'm not interviewing his ass. So, but Ak and Barack, they both here. They kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> right there. But I got nothing to ask. I'm not interested. It is what it is. They keep doing this show. Whatever. They, they shouldn't have the platform that they have. They haven't accomplished anything. But whatever. Don't let these dudes rock. I'm not going to hate too much. No doubt, bro. I be, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to start coming and doing my thing whenever I can, ask whatever questions I can, get in whatever location situations I can. Uh, but I, as I said, it's not, it's not my style. It's, it's not my style to really be pressing people and annoying people. So it is what it is. Damn, I'm fucking getting used to this. There we go. That's yeah, that's not, that's not really my style. I don't annoy people. I don't harass people. I don't do that funny stuff. So, so it is what it is. See what we got here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I come in peace. I come in peace. I, I, I don't come for beef or war. I come all in peace. Maybe I should go ask some people what they think about this fight and who they think is going to win. Some people outside Madison Square Garden get some other footage and make this a little different than just a press conference and some interviews because that's what everybody does. And there's really nobody else out here for me to interview. They're packing up. It was actually pretty damn hard to find to get into the 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 Madison Square Garden, and, and this is not even taking place at the Hulu Theater. So it's like, what the fuck? Oh my god! All right, I have a, a device called the DJI Gimbal Five, and I'm getting used to using this shit. I'm not the best at it yet, but it's it's pretty pretty dope, pretty dope shit. Um. But yeah, let me get, let me uh, start walking up out of here because I don't have see anybody else that I want to interview. And like I said, there really is no undercard here. I don't see no coaches. I would like to see if uh, what's his name, if Xander Zayas would have still been on this on this fight card. I would have liked to ask Peter Khan some questions uh, regarding uh, cambosis and a lot of other things, but it's not possible uh, because it's li there's limited people here. Uh, I didn't find out, find out about who was on this undercard till last minute because they hadn't announced it. It is what it is. But let me let me Uber Lango. <laughs> let me get the little top rank, rank background in the camera for dudes. There we go, all the way over there in the background. Um. So. Let me ask y'all a question. It's, it, I, I'm gonna walk up out of here now. I have a, I, I don't need the Wi-Fi from Madison Square Garden. It's, it sucked last time and my video was choppy, so this time I brought my own mobile Wi-Fi, which is what I'm using to capture this video. So, yeah, man. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit and I'm gonna walk up out of here. Uh, can I exit? I have to, thank you so much, sir. You have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Getting up out of here and I'll continue talking a little smack and a little more smoke on my way out. But I'll see me there. Look, I didn't even get to comb my hair out here. I just, I walked out the door like a madman just cause I had to make it and I even made it late. It was hard to find the entrance to Madison Square Garden. Thank you so much again, sir. You have a good one. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, a very nice gentleman police officer helped me get to the entrance cause the main, the, the where we're supposed to walk in to get to this entrance was closed. So I had to go around through like the, the superstar entrance. <laughs> That's why I answered through, uh, so whatever. But hey, look, 
I didn't get stopped walking through the through the star's entrance. It is what it is. I, I, I made it. I made it. But yo, so I was having a discussion with Maestro uh, on Twitter. Damn, and now here we go outside. You catch all the New York sounds and all the trash. But yeah, man. Um, I was with. Uh, I was having a discussion with Maestro about who Bevo should fight next. Maestro was saying that next Bevo needs to fight uh, Zuldo. But I don't see any reason why Bevo needs to fight Zuldo. If anything, I think, uh, let's go this way. If anything, I think that uh, uh, Zuldo hasn't done anything to deserve a Bevo fight. Like, if Zuldo would have done something, I get it. But why should Zulu get a, a, a chance at getting at a, at a getting a belt when Zulu ain't done shit? He ain't done nothing. I'm about to go walk to the gym to go lift some weights. But uh, you know what I'm saying, got got to continue getting slow. But on my way to the gym, I'ma continue talking smack with y'all. You already know. But Zulu has fought nobody but truck drivers. I'm not saying that Berlanga is any better than Zulu. They're both pretty much on the same boat. The difference is that Berlanga has been boxing for a very little bit of time he hasn't been boxing for that long and as a pro he's been doing much better things and I think that Zuldo has been doing because they both been fighting the same level of opposition I think this fight is going to tell us a lot about Zuldo though I mean about uh, ben, uh, like, why, why am I throwing all the names that he would be potentially be facing in the future I think this fight is going to tell us a lot about Berlanga though specifically because Thank you so much. I think it's going to tell us a lot about Berlanga, specifically because uh, Romer Alexis Angulo is a dude that uh, both Benavides and both Zuldo fought. And both Benavides and Zuldo had a long fight with Romer Alexis Angulo. If, uh, if, uh, what's his name? If uh, Berlanga can somehow figure out how to stop him early, I think that's a good look. Just like I was saying last fight that Edgar Berlanga had to stop Steve Rose in order to look better than Triple G and to potentially start pushing and putting his neck to Triple G's foot about getting that, that fight. But he didn't knock out Steve Rose. He was super humble about it though. Uh, you heard me asking him a question. I, uh, uh, I, was, I was asking the father a question too, stuttering a little bit with my Spanish, but it's okay. I didn't go prepared with any questions. The questions that I went prepared with were for Edgar Berlanga and for Romer Alexis Angulo. They were not for the father, not for any trainers or coaches. I was hoping Peter Kahn was there, but like I said, at the, uh, after Xander Zayas was removed from the fight card, it is what it is. But this happened on Puerto Rican Day Parade, uh, or the Puerto Rican uh, Day Parade weekend, which is dope, it's dope, can't complain. I got invited to go to that parade, but, and, and like stroll and march and stuff with my frat brothers. But I'm way too much into my own personal career and this YouTube stuff and media right now, so I'm doing that. But I'm walking myself to the gym. Like I said, I'm gonna keep you guys with me while I walk to the gym. Keep it interesting, do something different. Let's see, what's some recent, recent news that we have heard about boxing? Oh. Niggas ain't talking to me, so don't be calling me. But uh, nah, um, Recent news we got, Devin Haney saying that him moving up to 140 and dropping the belts is a potential. It's kind of crazy. Uh, shit, I think he should go for that rematch. It's only right that Cambozo gets the rematch. But if Devin Haney does leave 135, then that does open the possibility of Cambozo getting some belts. So we'll see what happens. I, 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 it is what it is. Uh, and I think he'd be soft if he dodges the rematch clause. Yeah, people are like, oh, he beat him convincingly. There, I don't want to see that fight again. No, no, no. Yeah, right. Stop it. Look, Cambosis, uh, he didn't really get to implement his abilities, but there was a whole lot of hugging from Devin Haney, so it is what it is. Uh, Devin Haney didn't have a masterful performance. That's not the performance that we want to see for a four-belt undisputed match. That's definitely not what we want to see, so it is what it is. It is what it is. Let's stop... Uh, Giving too much merits and props, but they're not owed or deserved or do. It is what it is. Um, yo, by the way, weed shop's starting to open over here in New York. Look at this shit. 
Weed World candies, trash. I'm surprised that, like there usually is, there's usually like four, five, six ganja dealers over here on the block. And uh, these four fit, uh, like right in front of that weed spot. And it's funny because they open the shops, but it's illegal. Right now the shops that they're opening are mad illegal, but whatever. And there goes the police harassing people, sucking pee pee, because I don't like police. Dude deserves the rematch. He gave Haney the shot for all the belts weeks off. That's a fact. Yes, sir. Definitely went off the dome asking whatever came to my mind. But yeah, yo, it's crazy because it would be super weak for Devin Haney to move up to 140 instead of taking the rematch. He's saying that there's a whole shitload of proper possibilities and he has to discuss it with his team and Bob Arum. Well, we all know what Bob Arum wants. Bob Arum wants all the dollars. So we all know that that may not be that may not be what Bob Aaron wants to do. Bob Aaron may not want to give Cam Bosa the rematch, but it is what it is. It's a contra contractual obligation. I'm all for that rematch, and I think Cam Bosa will do better in the second fight. That usually is the case. That usually is the case, or how you guys say, clown bozo, clown bozo. Damn, you guys be murdering dudes. It's just crazy. Headed to the gym in this busy city. Bob wants him to fight Loma, I would think. Yeah, the one thing that I do have to say is that Devin Haney, that I give that Devin Haney pops for, but I don't know if it's true because everybody calls each other out and don't do shit. Uh, Devin Haney was saying that he would fight uh, yeah, Lomachenko or Tank Davis or move up and wait or fight Clam Bo or Clown Bozo, as you guys say, in a rematch. Those are the, the four possibilities for him, so. Let's see what happens, you know. Um, let's see what happens. But to go, I, I, I'm close to the gym. I'm not too far from the gym anymore. Um, but I'm still gonna stay. You know what, let's turn left right here. Yeah, turn left right here, cause I was in the sun baking and I just gotta go a couple avenues and I'm over there at Blink, so yeah. But, um. Yeah, I agree, LSG. Anyone would like to see Tank fight anyone with uh, Pose. I think he will, though. Uh, or maybe I'm, uh, I'm, a, maybe I'm a fool. <laughs> maybe I'm a fool and I'm just believing the hype. But I definitely think that Tank will start fighting people. He was talking about leaving Trump contracts. He was talking about trash about this whole Rolando Romero stuff. Unless that was all just like fun games trash and nonsense you know what i'm saying we don't know but look i hope tank davis starts fighting people i hope it doesn't continue being the same clown nonsense uh tank davis needs to fight any shit even fight clown bozo <laughs> that's a better fight than roly romero and the people he's been fighting so yeah man yeah man Fucking up. Oh. She thought the camera was facing us. She was like, hi. Nah, man, the camera's facing me. This is about me. Nah, I'm talking shit. I am the content. Yeah. <laughs> New York is proud of that shit, look. You gotta walk around, people. But, um, besides the uh, clown, clown Bozo and Haney, and Berlanga and all the trash talk about Zuldo because yeah I mean Zuldo has passed the eye test and he looks like he could be the the best opposition for Bevo at 175 since he is the mandatory for Bevo at 175 but I just think that Zuldo hasn't done anything and that'll be an easy fight for Bevo that'll be an easy fight one with uh, powerful combination punching It'll be a 12 round fight, it won't be a knockout. Bevo isn't really a, a knockout fighter, a knockout puncher. Uh, and uh, I have seen Zulu to have a chin. Zulu does have a chin. Uh, I just don't think that he's the greatest, but he does have a chin, you can't hate on that. He gets tagged a lot. He's getting tagged crazy by Unieski. He got buzzed by Unieski. I thought Unieski had, had a chance at knocking, him, at knocking him out at a certain point. 
And then he does that disgusting shit in the last fight, coming in at like 200, 204, something like that. Foolish shit. Foolish shit. What else we got here? Oh, let's turn. Let's turn. I need to figure out. I know exactly how to do it, but I'm live streaming, and I don't think I could do that with the live streaming software. Oh, jaywalking. Jaywalking. We ain't getting hit by a car, though. These people, they stop for me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They stop for anybody. I ain't special. What else we got in boxing? Give me some topics so I keep going, because this is off the top of the head. You already know. Upper body day, leg day. What's up? Uh, I did leg day yesterday, man. Today, I'm about to go and destroy. Um, about to go and destroy, uh, what you call it? Today, back and biceps. Back and biceps. About, about, about to make these guns even bigger. You already know. Fucking. <laughs> oh, wait at another light. Let's see it. Who else we got? Who else we got? That was uh, my first solo press conference. Thanks wholeheartedly to Maestro who was able to get me the credentials to get inside and make that happen. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I probably would yeah, no, not probably. But for that, I definitely wouldn't have gotten into press conference. So thanks to Maestro and all that. Uh, I want to be like Rolando when I grow up and get me an ice style chain. <laughs> I, I, some real, I may just go buy me some jewelry right now. But yo, it's that time. I've arrived at the gym. Anybody good on the undercard? Honestly, this is supposed to be a much bigger undercard and fight card than what it is. I have no idea who's on the undercard. No idea who's on the undercard. Uh, let's see. How much do you think Golden Boy will last since they put on the worst matches? I don't know. As me and my Astro were discussing yesterday, as me and my Astro were discussing yesterday, uh, it's a tough one because, uh, uh, what you gonna call it? Golden Boy, they only have Zuldo and uh, Ryan Garcia. And if those guys lose, get beat, do bad, anything along those lines, it's gonna be a bad situation. It's going to be a bad situation. It's going to be a bad situation for Golden Boy, who doesn't have nobody. He's keeping his fighters safe, not getting his fighters title matches, blocking fights from happening. Oh, he also has Mungia, but nobody cares about him. Mungia and, and fucking uh, Zuzo, they're doing the same shit, fighting truck drivers over and over and over. Just truck, from truck driver to truck driver to truck driver. Mungia's fighting this weekend against... Uh, Jim Kelly, Jimmy Kelly, some shit like that. Somebody nobody's ever even fucking heard of. Why? Just trying to rack up them fight numbers, you know. I agree. It's already bad enough. But that's because Oscar puts on whack shows. Oscar puts on hella whack shows. Oscar doesn't get his guys title fights. Oscar tries to keep uh, most of the money. Oscar is just there so if that's the case. destroying fighters' careers. Every fighter that's been with Oscar has had beef with Oscar. Yes, a lot of fighters that have been with, with Bob Arum have had beef with Bob Arum. But then you have had fighters that don't have beef with Bob Arum. Like, I feel fighters have beef with Bob Arum not as much as they have beef with Oscar. And not like, not as much as they have beef with uh, Leonard Ellerby. Uh, Eddie Hearn don't be getting beef. Eddie Hearn seems to pay his fighters. His fighters seem to be happy with him. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya is one of the worst. Uh, shit, I would say Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy, they're even under, uh, what's his name? Uh, they're even under PBC, so it is what it is. The money team in PBC, it is what it is. Ryan Garcia is going to smoke Fortuna, but it would be hilarious if Fortuna lands one of his wild haymakers. Uh, Ryan Garcia is going to eat up Fortuna, unfortunately. I'm Dominican and I back up Fortuna and I would love Fortuna to win and land something significantly. But what I saw from Fortuna in that last fight versus Jojo Diaz, I, that shit didn't impress me at all. Not at all. Not one single bit. Fuck that. So, yeah, man. I think Ryan Garcia is going to smoke Fortuna. Ryan Garcia is much faster than Jojo Diaz. He doesn't throw combinations like Jojo, but he throws much faster punches. His jab is sharp. His hook is sharp. And uh, he's very, very fast. And I think that uh, Fortuna is going to 
get hit with some shots and potentially even get knocked out. I do think that it is a little late for Ryan Garcia to be fighting for Tuna now. He was supposed to fight for Tuna last year. Jojo fought for Tuna and finished him. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Jojo fought for Tuna and finished him, not finished him, but beat him pretty badly. I think that Ryan Garcia should be fighting Jojo, not for Tuna, unfortunately. But whatever, I guess uh, he's trying to do a step up in opposition so that he doesn't do a big jump up from nobody to somebody like he did with the Luke Campbell fight and get knocked down and get his mental health issues again and get his heart taken away from him. Because that's exactly what happened in my opinion. And here comes the, the ambulance. Man, got to fuck up my stream with them goddamn sirens. And I'm outside, so I got to deal with whatever New York, the New York world gives me. Let's see what else we got here. Tim, Tim, Timothy Bradley never had beef either. It's crazy how long he's been getting away with this. It's, it's, it is no. Golden Boy is the worst. Same here. I rooted for it to go, but he did some more point to me. I didn't think to go had anything, anything for Ryan Garcia. It's, it's like uh, D Style was saying, to go has got to go, because to go definitely didn't have any answers for Ryan Garcia. Yo, this, this, this ambulance is sucking my, uh, you know what, let me could walk the opposite way from the ambulance. I'll come back to, to where the entrance of the gym is. There you go, now you shut the fuck up? Shit. They ain't even got nobody in there, it's hella traffic. It's the annoying sirens and loud sirens aren't gonna help get them by anywhere. Let's see, what we got, what we got? Yo, what's good, Pudo? I can't complain. You already know out here in these New York streets, living. Just came from the top-ranked press conference. Uh, I caught the ending of it. I, I was able to ask a couple questions to Berlanga and his dad, and that's about it. Uh, I got there a little late, but still fine. I still got there. Uh, I'll be there tomorrow for the weigh-ins. I'll make sure I'm there early. I don't want to miss that. I want to catch the full footage. Uh, definitely check me out, tune in and support a dude. You know how it goes. Uh, what else we got? It's funny. I thought Fortuna beat Jojo. No kid. Nah, Pudo. Look, man. Pudo. I'm Dominican, bro. Stop it. I'm Dominican and I wanted uh, uh, Fortuna to win, but I don't think Fortuna de beat Jojo. Uh, beat Jojo. Jojo definitely gave it to Fortuna. Fortuna barely threw punches. Jojo was catching them with combinations. Chris looking beautiful out there. Making Jojo look like a like a tired, washed up veteran. I honestly think Oscar should push Blair the Flair, but that's another pocket. Bro, uh, Tim, I'm 100% with you. Uh, Blair the Flair, although he's not as an amazing of a boxer as we'd like him to be, uh, he does a very good promotion of himself with that with the rest of the antics and the shit he be doing and the woos and all that other nonsense he definitely uh he definitely 100 percent uh markets himself for and that could be a market for him but uh, look he lost to alexis rocha i don't see blair the flair having much of a big future unless he comes back and gets that win against alexis rocha yo yo Yo, you definitely have a good mic connected or something because I can hear you with all the noise or something. That's dope. I have a very expensive phone. <laughs> I have a very expensive phone that I'm still paying. The Galaxy S21 Ultra got the best camera on the market, although the S22 came out, but the S21 is still better. I don't even have a mic connected. I, I'm actually trying to go buy one at B&H after I get out of the gym so that I have a, a wireless mic tomorrow where I could put the mic to people's mouths and get the full clear quality audio that I'm looking for. At least he's entertaining. Yeah, he's definitely entertaining. Rainbow flags everywhere. Oh yeah, that's a fact. There's gonna be rain. It's, it's Pride Month. It's for this entire month over here in New York. You're gonna see every bar, every location, even the Empire State Building everywhere rocking rainbow flags because it is the it is Pride Month and there's not, you know, gotta show people love. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me have a little seat here for a moment while I finish this last last couple minutes this last segment here I remember him more than Rocha I know I just wish he would have been supported more I remember him more than Rocha too he definitely sold that fight Rocha didn't sell that fight just Rocha had the bigger punches was more exciting on the night of the fight and at the end of the day uh, excitement in a good fight is what you what people want to see people want to see big punches and knockouts and that's exactly what happened to Blair the Flair Blair the Flair you know, cool, he got his antics and the woo and all that nonsense he was doing, but 
who cares about that? If you ain't, if you're not, if you're not putting those punches to action, if you're not looking beautiful with your jabs and your rights, if you're not looking amazing with your with your defensive movements, nobody wants to see that. Uh, Blair, the flair, he looked like a like an experienced amateur in the ring. He didn't look like a professional, at least in my opinion. He looked, he did some things good, but there were some things that he just did terrible. Like he had his chin up in the air the entire time. It just didn't make sense. Since the uh, same in San Francisco, I live downtown. Yeah, man, it is what it is. It's Pride Month out here in, in, in the big cities that do not show hate to uh, LGBTQ+. They're they're gonna have the flags out here, and there's nothing wrong with that. Look, I don't show hate. I show love. Appreciate everybody. Live and let live. Let people be happy. Don't. You know, it is what it is. I don't, I'm not mad at the at, at the rainbow flags. I'm all for it. But when the ambulances were passing by that were super loud, I could still hear you. That's insane. That's amazing. That's lovely because the ambulance the, the ambulance was just annoying. After leaving the sirens off for so long, they started annoying the shit out of me. I'm like, what the fuck? People aren't going to be able to hear me. I'm not streaming for myself. I'm not here recording a video for myself. I'm record I'm streaming for the public. So, you know. Um, yeah, man. Fucking. Canelo slash Triple G probably would be an experienced pay-per-view with a whack undercard. Oh, that's usually the case with, with Canelo fights, though. Because usually Canelo has the main attraction, and then everybody else uh, on the undercard is usually doodle fighters or up-and-coming fighters uh, that don't necessarily have the name and are trying to gain some nor notoriety and some traction from Canelo. The last time we saw Montana Love, maybe we see Montana Love uh, again. We saw him at a few of the last... Canelo undercard fights, so it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we do see him again. The street behind me is finally empty. Let's go. I finally got some peace and quiet here. Um, Canelo Triple G3 though, I think uh, Canelo uh, is definitely gonna come back and have an explosive, monstrous knockout. I think he needs to figure something out without with his weight. I don't think See, people, in, in us boxing fans, we do this thing like Cambosis lost against uh, against Haney. Everybody, he got Joe Tessitore and everybody. Oh, I don't want to see that fight again. No, no, uh, that, that's it. It's over. Uh, we saw what we need to see. That fight is boring. We don't want to see that fight again. Bullshit, bro. Stop hating. Stop hating. Stop the trash. Let the man fight his rematch. He got the rematch clause. Same shit with Canelo. Everybody's like, oh, nah, uh, uh, Canelo, uh, he got completely outdone by Bevo. I don't want to see that again. For Canelo's sakes, for boxing sakes, I don't want to see that again. And everybody just needs to shut the fuck up. I want to see Canelo fight again. I want to see him fight Bevo again. I'm a dude that goes against all challenges. Win or lose, draw, I, I, if I was a boxer, I'd be fighting Bevo again. Fuck that. Big money, big bread, big challenges. And I'd prepare much better the gas tank i don't think was there for canelo the power is always there but the gas tank wasn't there i also think he needs to do stuff in combination soft punches as well as hard punches i think that's something that bevo used that was able to beat canelo canelo was only in there throwing power shots and trying to knock a dude out so it is what it is so, uh tim says sometimes it's better to watch with the tv on mute that's a fact i i do either or the thing is i like if you watch with the TV on mute, yes, you mute all the announcers and the trash that they be talking, but you also mute the sound of the punches landing. And there's nothing that I love more than, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that to me, that's where it's at. So, I love hearing the punches land. I love seeing the impact of the punches. So it is what it is. You know, it, it's like you win some, you lose some. Yo, my man, stop honking the horn. You're destroying my stream. <laughs> Honking the horn, bro. This this corner to corner traffic, bumper to bumper. This this guy ain't going nowhere. He's just honking the horn for no goddamn reason. What's up with no one fighting Janibek? Is Andre gonna fight that dude? Supposedly Andre's gonna fight that dude. People been talking about, oh, Janibek, Alim Kanuli. That's who's gonna fight. He's not proven. Look, he needs to fight Janibek. I would love to see somebody fight Janibek. And let us see what Janet Beck is about. Andre is supposed to fight uh, Janet Beck and Lynn Canuli, but vamos a ver lo que pasa. We don't know because uh, see, I, I feel like um, 
Boo Boo is just looking for a big fight. Boo Boo, Boo Boo wants a Canelo. Boo Boo wants a title. Boo Boo wants something crazy. But Boo Boo ain't really working for the big opportunities, and nobody's gonna give it because Boo Boo does present some type of risk. But he also presents a boring fight. Boo Boo is like, Boo Boo will be the dude that would try to do what Devin Haney did to Cambosis with all that holding sloppy shit. He will try to do that if he gets a Canelo fight. And nobody wants to see that. And Canelo will still probably knock his ass out. It is what it is, although he looked good with his knockouts in the last fight. Canelo smokes beef on rematch. Pudo, I'm going to agree with you. I think Canelo smokes beef on the rematch. I would love to see that. Kenny, I wasn't being serious. I had Fortuna winning 7-5. <laughs> I thought you wasn't being serious, bro. You you definitely know what you're talking about when it comes to boxing. You and I have had conversations before on other channels, so you definitely know what you're talking about. So I was like, Fortuna, stop playing. I'm Dominican. I don't even think Fortuna won, but I get it, though. If he fights Bevel again, that just shows his belief in himself. Oh, bro, he's going to fight Bevel again. He's going to fight Bevel again. He has, in my opinion, he has to fight Bevel again the next fight. Like, that has to happen. Big time. It can be a situation where Bevel wins and Canelo never fights him again. This isn't like Canelo versus Mayweather when Mayweather's not going to give him the opportunity. This is all on Canelo's uh, opportunity given. Yes, Beaver will fight him again anytime. Beaver won. Why wouldn't Beaver fight him? Uh, uh, Mayweather wasn't going to fight him again. We know how that was. May I'm surprised Mayweather fought him to begin with. But Mayweather fought him because Mayweather knew he could beat him at that time. But, yeah, uh, uh, just to close this out, Berlanga versus... Uh, uh, Alexis Sangulo, that's his toughest challenge thus far. I think Berlanga is going to uh, be able to pull this one off. He says he's back and better from all the injuries, so he should look better than ever in this fight. Uh, they are looking for knockouts, as both Berlanga and his father said. Uh, they're just they're just looking to go in there and fight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and pick Edgar Berlanga, although I think that Alexis Sangulo is going to give him a hell of a challenge. Alexis and Gulo has power. He can box, and he was in there with both Zuldo and Bevo. Uh, Zuldo and Benavides, those are his two biggest fights, uh, and, his, and his only two losses. So it's going to be a definitely challenging fight. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, but at the end of the day, I'm going to pick Berlanga to win. Probably a 12 round decision. Yeah, probably a 12 round decision. I mean, Angulo is 38 years old at the end of the day. Uh, so yeah. Uh, besides that, I spoke about Haney, Devin Haney and Cambosis, Devin Haney trying to do all this other stuff, saying potential options and, uh, and already kind of making excuses for why he may not fight Cambosis. But the other stuff they were saying, potentially going to 140 or fighting Tank Davis or fighting uh, uh, Lomachenko, those are also three good fights, so it's not necessarily ducking, it's just that I really want to see him fight with Cambosis again. Uh, Cambosis deserves his rematch that he had on contract. Then, uh, then I spoke a little bit about Bevo and uh, compared him to uh, uh, to Berlanga after Bevo and Berlanga. That's about that's about it. I spoke about Canelo, not Bevo, excuse me, Berlanga and Zuldo. Uh, and then after that, I spoke about Canelo and Bevo, and that rematch potentially happened. Uh, let me get to these last comments, and then I am going to get myself in the gym because I need to go get swole. Booboo situation is weird. Been watching boxing 30 years and never seen a 15-year vet never win a championship off a reigning champ. I feel you. Booboo situation is that weird, but I think he does it to himself. He should be putting himself in the mix and fighting the fights. And I know he's trying to fight the fights, but only against Canelo. He wants to pay there, and he's not going to get the fight against Canelo unless he does something else that's big and stops looking, looking as boring out there. <coughs> Tim says... Tim Gallegos says, David Morrell has a good fan base. Canelo, uh, Canelo looks like he might be almost done, kind of. He looked really bad in the Beaver fight. I hope Berlanga shows proves everyone wrong. I'm with you on that, Tim. I agree. I don't think Canelo is declining, though. I think that the weight was too much for Canelo. I think he will be fine uh, and then it, it, once he learns to manage that weight and what he's going to do. You saw that guy. He wanted to see what, 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 what view the camera's facing. He wanted to check himself out on the stream. It is what it is. How's it going, brother? David Morrell is definitely growing in the sport. He's going to be good. He's just not there yet. He he didn't look too good against Henderson. He needs to prove himself a little more. 
Melo says, yep, the contract is a contract. That's for facts. The contract is a contract, and Devin Haney needs to honor that. Fuck all that not making this fight happen and going somewhere else. Honor that contract. Be a man of your word. And and do it in good fashion. Don't, don't, don't do a rematch and do all this hugging shit. Get a better ref, and let's not allow Devin Haney to get away with that. And I think we'll have a much better fight. I don't think we'll have the boring fight that we all thought it was. But it's time for me to get out of here. If you're currently watching, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video, show me love. I appreciate you all. Also, I'm a musician, I'm a rapper as well as a YouTuber. Do me a favor and go check out my music. My name is K.O. Kenny. The name of my EP is all on the table and you can find that on all platforms, all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Amazon Music, Tidal, everywhere, everywhere. I put my work in. Show me some love, check that out, share it to some friends and family, subscribe to my channel, share my channel, show me some uh, some love. I'm going to continue doing this. Me and my show, we're going to make this shit happen. We're going we gonna to own this New York City boxing scene. We're going to make this shit happen. Thank you all for supporting. You all have a great night. Also, subscribe to my Astro A. That's my dude. That's my brother. You already know. You guys all take care. You guys all have a great day. Shit. I may even be back later with another stream, but right now it's guess all time, and I, and I, and I, can't, I, I can't skip on the gym. I'm on my 20 day straight at the gym. I've been going bananas. Been going bananas. I'm going to show some results of before and after on my stream as well. But yeah, man, you guys all take care. You guys all have a great day. If anything, I may see you later. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I may see you later. Y'all have a great day, man. Peace out. Salute. Mad love. Y'all take care.